So welcome everybody to the Singing Secrets Masterclass. I am so excited. Hey Mia, great to have you on board. Hey Selena, let, oh good, so it looks like you're back on track too. So let's get started. So I'm going to go through my presentation and try to answer all your questions as we go. But I just want to say if I miss them, I'll answer them after I've done my teaching because I've got two screens up. I've got the PowerPoint presentation and sometimes it's hard to watch the comments at the same time. So if I don't answer your question, I'll email you with the answer or I'll post in our Facebook group, How to Sing with Roma Waterman. But I'm going to try and answer them all here as well. It's so great to have you. I just want to start by saying if you've failed at vocal training in the past, you know what? It's probably not your fault. And if you've been concerned in the past that you can't succeed with singing, I want you to put those fears to rest. This is why I'm here. I really want to help you. And, you know, there's actually a lot of singing teachers who don't have a lot of training or experience who want you to think you can't sing with ease or increase volume without having to push or sing higher with more flexibility, learning simple techniques. But it's not true. So I'm here to show you how to use this is what we're going to talk about today, correct breathing, posture and vocal techniques to see fast results during this webinar. So my goal for this masterclass is I want to help people who want to sing with ease without having to push, learn simple techniques for correct posture, breathing and resonance without pushing your voice to sing louder, stronger. And I don't want you spending lots of money on vocal training that may or may not work. So this is what this masterclass is all about. And then at the end, I'm actually launching a new online course that I want to share with you. And for anyone that does this webinar, you're going to get a special massive discount for it because you're kind of our little singing family now, which is exciting. So the easiest way for you to achieve these goals is to have correct vocal training from someone who's tried and tested these techniques over years of practice themselves. So I want to teach you some of these principles that I teach my students in my How to Sing online series. I know lots of you have some of those courses, which just totally makes my day. So who am I? That's a picture of me. Some of you have met me. Most of you know me. For those of you that are overseas, welcome. This is a, a picture of me in my home studio. So this is the boring bit for me, but I figure you need to know who I am. So I'm a multi-award winning singer-songwriter. I'm the founder of the Melbourne Gospel Choir, who you may have seen on TV, in particular Carols by Candlelight on Channel 9 in Australia. Australia. I've been a session singer. I've worked on TV, on radio with some of the best artists in Australia. Great experience. I've released my own albums, toured globally for over 20 years. I've trained professionally in classical singing for over 20 years. I've owned a music school, been a vocal coach for over 25 years. And I've also been a vocal coach to contestants on The X Factor, The Voice and Australian Idol. And here's a fun fact. I've also actually been a judge for the pre-auditions for The X Factor. So before you see all the stuff that happens on TV, there's actually TV producers and vocal coaches in separate rooms. And we're the ones that kind of filter all the contestants into the next round, which is what you see on television. That was so much fun doing that. I think um, the first year I did it, I listened to something like 150 singers in one day. Yes, one day. That was a lot of work. <laughs> so here's my story. In my 20s, I was touring and I started to have a little bit of vocal trouble and I, the big story is I actually ended up collapsing on stage um, because I was absolutely physically exhausted. I was having all this trouble with my voice. It wouldn't work the way I wanted to work. It always was fatigued and tired came back home from this tour and I was diagnosed with a vocal nodule, nodule and a condition called fibromyalgia, which is like chronic fatigue syndrome. And uh, I was put on vocal rest and I had to get speech therapy for over six months. It was really a terrible time of my life, to be honest. I was really depressed. Um, but I had an amazing vocal teacher who specialised in speech therapy and healthy singing. And she taught me the correct breathing and posture techniques. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't teach. A lot of vocalists 
teachers don't teach. That's why I wanted to do this masterclass. So my plan at the beginning was simply to practice every day to get rid of this vocal nodule, increase my energy, and then just go for a singing exam and perform publicly again because I just felt like I'd fallen in a bit of a heap. My voice began to respond and I realised how to overcome my vocal and my anxiety struggles because I actually became very anxious because I couldn't, my body and my voice didn't do what I wanted it to do. So I started to find that my voice was responding. It took about seven months for the nodule to disappear. But since then, I've never had trouble with my voice. So I learned it can be overcome with the right training tools. So I began to teach others what I'd learned from professional singers to beginners. I saw huge improvements in my students, many who'd been having lessons for years with no results. And so I started taking on more students than I could handle. And a lot of singers, professional singers, began to ask me to help them, but I couldn't teach them all. There were too many. So that's when I created the online courses and what you're doing now, these, this training. Because I realised I could reach more people and I could do it in my sleep as well. So that's how the How to Sing series was born. And so how's this? Within two years, we have over 16,000 people doing these courses. I love that. And I get the most beautiful emails from amazing people, in particular people who have lost their confidence or maybe been told that they can't sing or told to give up their, their passion for singing and how it's just really encouraged them to continue. So if you're one of those students, thank you. I absolutely love having you as one of my stories. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go a bit quicker, but I've never had a problem with my voice and now I can help more people. How does this apply to you? Well, some of you doing this masterclass, you'll, you'll already be professional singers. Some of you, you'll just be starting out and be completely intimidated as to where to start. And then the others, you'll be in the middle somewhere. You'll be looking for more, but you're not at a professional level yet. So the singing secrets I'm going to share with you today can be applied to your voice no matter what level of singing you might be. So you can have the confidence to know I've tried all of these tips myself and not only do they work, but they've been proven to be effective in getting you set up for a lifetime of singing. So these simple tips can be implemented whether you're an advanced singer or just starting out. In fact, I've, I've actually been shocked to discover that many vocalists are never taught the basics of breathing and posture. It's actually one of my pet hates, I have to tell you, because that's actually the foundation. So there's a whole bunch of results I'm going to share with you as well. Um, I've, I had a student called Jo and she was having lots of difficulty with tightness in her throat, which was restricting her vocal tone. She had a very breathy, soft voice and any time she pushed, she would start to cough. And instead of working on her voice, we focused on her posture and her breathing. So I remember sitting with her and just going, Let's just try some of the Alexander technique. These are some of the things I'm going to teach you today. Give her some breathing ideas. Within a few minutes, she began to sing and her voice was loud, strong, clear, and she was singing higher than she ever had before. That was just in a few minutes. I couldn't, even I couldn't believe it, to be honest. You should have seen her face when this voice came out that we'd never heard from her before. She started to cry and she was like, I didn't even know that was in me. It was just beautiful. So in just one lesson, her voice was completely transformed. Now today, this is what we're going to cover. Secret number one, the pillars of singing. Get these right and your voice will thrive. Secret two, how to increase vocal range and flexibility without an expensive vocal lesson. And then secret number three, I'm going to teach you how to learn and sing harmonies with, a, with one hack that I've been using ever since I can remember that I love to use. So let's start with the three pillars of singing. Secret number one, how are you guys all going? Just, just type in the browser in the comments if you're still with me. I just want to make sure you're all still there. I'm not talking to the dust here. Yes, yes, you're all here. Good, Susie. Great, Mel. Great to see you all. I'm just delighted that you're here. And Selena, you're on. Yay. That is good. I'm having a lot of trouble with my the chat box here, but I can see you all. Good. Giovanna, great to have you. All right, here we go. Secret number one. Now, some people think, I don't understand how pillars can work for me. Other singers will say a whole bunch of stuff like, I don't think I can do this. It's too technical. So I want to tell you a quick story. I've had singers come to my studio who have had years of lessons 
No one's ever taught them these basic principles. Do you know how many times I've said to people, "Have you? has anyone taught you any breathing exercises or posture exercises? And they say, no. Hey, Joanne, great to have you on board. So no one's ever taught them these basic principles. Some singers think um, once they apply them, uh, their skill level has increased in a span of a few months. So that is pretty awesome. What was taking them years to achieve. So the three pillars of singing are dun, 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 dun. the first one is posture, number two is breathing, and number three is resonance. I'm going to go through all of these really quickly and give you a tip for each one. So posture, let's start with posture. Now these are super simple but they work. How are you supposed to stand to breathe? Why is posture important? Well if you're not standing correctly you can't take proper breaths you cannot breathe correctly and then if you can't breathe correctly because your voice is created by breath you cannot sing correctly so how do you stand this is all based on something called the alexander technique standing straight balancing on the balls of your feet as opposed to the heels of your feet a lot of people balance a majority of the posture on their heels but what you want is to balance on the balls of your feet it doesn't mean that you are tiptoeing but the, the the majority of the weight of your body is on the balls of your feet keep your rib cage open so you don't want to be slouching forward not taking deep breaths in you've almost got to stand a little bit to attention keep your rib cage open no slouching forward or arching your back a lot of people think oh if i stand straight this is the correct way and they put a big big arch in their back and get a lot of back pain but it's no slouching and it's no arching it's kind of in between and i've got a picture i'll show you in a minute you should be able to take a deep breath without your shoulders moving now, this is based off the Alexander technique if you want to do some more research into this. And I've also got more extensive stuff about it in my courses if you're doing them. So here is a picture of a friend of mine. So the first picture, obviously, she's slouching with her shoulders hunched forward. And in fact, the body pressure, the weight of her body is on the heels of her feet as opposed to the balls of her feet. And then the middle one, even though it might look great, there's quite a big arch in the middle of her back. The third one obviously is the correct one and that's where your body is buoyant and balanced. So it's it's fantastic. Jason, if you're watching, you can't actually use a mobile. You have to use a, a laptop or a computer. But yes, you can watch later. Okay, breathing, here we go. This is the next pillar. So we've covered posture. So breathing, a deep breath done correctly will expand the ridge cage without your shoulders rising. Now, a lot of people, when they take a deep breath in, their shoulders are going up and down. That's actually what's called clavicular very shallow breath and there's not a lot of support for your body and it's very difficult to get a good strong breath to sing correctly so you want a good deep breath where your rib cage is expanding but your shoulders are not going up and down they're not rising so practicing deep breathing that uses your intercostal muscles now those muscles are the muscles attached to each rib of your rib cage and um, you've got your outer intercostal muscles and your inner intercostal muscles that was a big word lots of words then but they are what help you to open and close your rib cage and so you want to be practicing deep breathing exercises that develop those intercostal muscles but also your abdominal muscles that's the correct way to breathe you've probably heard people here's a little thing that's interesting you've probably heard people say um, use your diaphragm now your diaphragm is the muscle that's attached to the last rib of your rib cage and it's actually what's called an involuntary muscle what does that mean it means that whether you know how to use it or not if you're breathing you're using it. So there's nothing you can do to strengthen that diaphragm. That's just a muscle that you that your body uses. But the abdominal muscles and your intercostal muscles, they can be strengthened just like any other muscle that you have, like in your arms or your legs. So practicing deep breathing and using deep breathing exercises will really help you. Breathing out, you should not let your shoulders collapse. They stay open and only let the movement come from the rib cage and the abdomen. So the trunk of your body is doing all the work. So here's an exercise for you. Some of you may already be doing this one, but put one hand on your diaphragm where round about where your belly button is. And I want you to stand in front of the mirror 
you don't have to do this right now. You can try like a quick version right now, but you stand in front of the mirror, you put one hand on your diaphragm round about where your belly button is. And I want you to take a deep breath in, but only where your hand is and your rib cage should be expand, expanding. So you don't want to see your rib, your shoulders going up and down at all. So you take a deep breath in and the, the whole trunk of your body should be filling up with air, but your shoulders should not be moving. And then when you breathe out, breathe on these words plus, well, they're not really words, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so you'll take a deep breath in. And when you do that, your stomach should be going in as sound is coming out. So you take that deep breath in without your shoulders moving. And the other words you can use are and the whole time those shoulders are not moving the trunk of your body is doing all the work that is a great simple exercise for developing those muscles but let me tell you something you can't do this unless you're standing correctly so now you can understand why posture is so important do you know even just putting your hands behind your back can actually cause breathing difficulty in singing so Standing correctly, body buoyant and balanced will allow you to breathe correctly. Let's go to the third pillar. So the third one is resonance. I love this word. I love resonance. What is resonance? Resonance is the ring or the clarity in your voice. So it's the, like if I was going to sing breathy, it'd be la. But if I was going to really sing with resonance, la. So there's a ring, there's clarity, it's clear. To sing with resonance, you need correct vocal placement. You will feel the voice not in the throat. It won't be wispy, breathy or soft. You'll actually feel it in the mask of the face. It should be forward clear and strong and you will actually sometimes feel like there's a buzzing in uh, the lips and the face as you go so you can get the feeling of good resonance by humming hmm, hmm. everybody do that for me now hmm, 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 hmm. you'll feel a little bit of a buzz on your lips the other sound that really works is like pretending that you're crying you'll feel really silly but that kind of sound is very resonant and it's right in the face again you have to use good breathing to do that you don't want to be pushing that sound but feeling like it's coming from the tummy area so good resonance by humming if you've been singing a long time you probably even do some of some exercises that really uh, enhance resonance so your and those kind of sounds are actually resonance exercises. They're not just warming up the voice, but they're also warming up the resonating chambers in the head and the face. So resonance is so much fun. To achieve this correctly, your posture and your breathing needs to be correct or it's very difficult to do. So that's why I call them the three pillars. That's why I call it the three pillars of singing because they are the foundation for your voice. Here's a case study for you. Jo, who we mentioned earlier, who'd had an immediate vocal shift when she used these three pillars. So we stopped working on her voice and we actually started to work on posture, breathing, and then eventually resonance. We talked about feeling the voice in the face and then she had all those things started to work for her and it was simple. It's not meant to be complicated. There's also physiological evidence that correct posture allows for better breathing, which increases resonance. In fact, um, the gentleman, Mr. Alexander, who invented the Alexander technique in the 1800s, he um, he actually had people, doctors sent people to him who had uh, not just vocal problems but had physical problems because they were finding that just allowing more breath into the body was creating more health. And so the Alexander Technique is taught today not just to singers. You can go and do classes in Alexander Technique. It's for people that have had car accidents, people that have spine trouble. It's amazing how just changing simple things can really affect your voice. So you get pillar one right, which is posture. That allows pillar two to work, which is breathing, which in turn allows pillar three to be effective. So the three pillars are fun. So you might also be thinking, I don't understand 
how the three pillars will help me because it's too simple or it, how it will improve my voice immediately or will it work correctly without a singing teacher? Well, I want to tell you the truth. Using these three pillars correctly can immediately change the sound of your voice and makes it so much easier to sing. It is just common sense. It's actually making your body do what it was supposed to do. You know, if you think of a little baby when they're learning to walk, you think about this. When they're learning to walk, what are they doing? They're balancing on the balls of their feet, aren't they? They're sort of on their tippy toes because that's how we were designed to walk, keeping the balance of our body on the balls of our feet. Not obviously tiptoeing, but you get the idea. A little baby when they're sleeping in the cot, where are they breathing from? Their diaphragm. Their shoulders aren't moving up and down. It's the trunk of the body doing the work. So actually, here's a little secret for you. Singing lessons isn't about learning something new. It's actually simply about unlearning bad habits. I know that's hard for some people to believe, but it's true because we're actually born to use our voices correctly, but then culture and a whole bunch of laziness gets in the way. So we're actually just going back to this is how your body was designed and this is how, if you want to get the most out of your body, how it can work. So it doesn't need to be complicated. Okay, how are you all going in there? I just want to make sure you're still all with me. Was that helpful? Are you guys doing okay? Just checking in on you, making sure you're all still with me. It's good to see that you're all here. Good, good, good. Yay. Okay, great. Great to have you here, Selena, Deb. Yay. Good. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Die, joy. I love that. <laughs> all right, secret number two. We're going to give you a little tip where, which is me, <laughs> how to increase vocal range and flexibility without an expensive vocal lesson. So many people think, for me to sing higher, I need to practice singing high all the time. Let me share a quick story about one of my students, Michael, who wanted to increase his vocal range. So he was using only exercises for the highest notes in their, in his range. Now, I don't know if you've done this before. I'm just going to interrupt. I can see, Isaac, you came a bit late. There's going to be a replay. So, yes, you'll be able to see what I've taught up until now. So just jump right in. Um, so he was, Michael, let's get back to Michael. He was singing away, just working on his higher register, and that was all he was doing. So do you want to guess what happened? I bet you'll probably guess. He actually did get those notes in his range. He actually did get those high notes, but something happened. He lost the lower part of his range. So he didn't actually increase his range. He only got higher, but he lost the same amount of notes down the bottom part of his range. So all Michael did was sing high and he lost all his lower range. Now, why? Because... When you're learning to sing correctly and increase your vocal range, you've always got to warm up your current vocal range. You have to start and finish using everything. Every note that you can sing, that is actually the way that you increase your vocal range, whether you want to sing lower or higher. You know, here's an example from my own life. When I was doing classical singing exams, I had to sing very, very high. I can't sing as high as that now because why? Because I don't actually um, do as much practice in that higher register as well as included my my middle and my lower registers because a lot of songs that I do, you know, I'm a worship leader, I sing um, a lot in church and a lot of it is the middle vocal range. And so I'm, I'm actually going back to starting to increase my vocal range again going back to everything that I'm teaching you now. And the way to do that is you always warm up your current vocal range. So don't just sing high. That's not going to help you. In fact, sometimes it can cause more tension. Most people just attempt to sing high without working on their current range. When you do that, like I just said, we get those high notes, but you lose the lower ones. And sometimes your middle range register also can kind of lose its... Um, lose its register is there a bit of echo is there what about if i turn down let me try that hang on is that a bit better i might be talking too loud <laughs> as you do okay let's keep going when you do get those lower notes you lose or when you do work on those higher notes you lose your lower ones and you don't want that you want to increase your range not lose it hey okay so the key to increasing vocal range is to work on your whole 
range. So you've got to work on everything. So that also includes, now this is very important, don't just do scales that go up the register. You must always come down. Why is that important? Because if you're just singing scales that go up and you, you sort of finish singing high, you actually can do what's called setting the voice. So you, your muscles just become set by singing those notes a certain way. So it's very important to always come back down the scale for a majority of your vocal exercises. And then every day you may notice, okay, I'm only singing, say, a C and in the high register you sing up to that c it might feel a bit tense but then you know go up a semitone or go up a tone go up the next note every day do a little bit more but always come back down it's so important this is the the easiest way to increase your vocal range your voice is a muscle so if you're not using it you lose it so that's that's also why we lose a lot of our higher register um, if you're working on your whole voice not just parts that's how you increase your range. Now, some singers might think, I'm not a flexible singer. That's only for the talented. Some people have a better range than me. I have a limited vocal range. That's what I was born with. Have you ever said these things to yourself? I certainly have. I can only sing a few notes well. I'm not sure I could increase my range. Well, this is the truth. With correct vocal training, it really is possible to extend your range to sing higher and lower than what you had expected. So I want to encourage you, it's not impossible. All right, I'm just giving you like massive masterclass class download here. I'm teaching you stuff that normally takes weeks to teach, but I just wanted to get you really excited. Hey, Julie, welcome to the webinar. Okay, secret number three. If you've, guys, if you've just come in now and you've missed a bit, there will be a replay. So don't worry if you've missed the first two secrets. So the first secret was the three pillars. The second secret was how to sing higher and lower. And secret number three is how to learn and sing harmonies the easy way. I'm going to give you my one top hack on how to do this. So some people say, I don't know how to find harmonies to sing them. I've had other singers say, I don't know how to sing a harmony when there's a melody. I get distracted, you know, and that is very, very common. So don't feel bad if that's you. Some other people might say, I don't know how to remember the parts. I don't know how to remember harmonies. I know them when I'm rehearsing them, but then I just forget. Well, let me explain. I'm going to give you a little story from my own personal life. This is a picture of the Melbourne Gospel Choir, which is the choir that I founded many years ago. We've had a wonderful uh, experience uh, singing on TV. This is at Channel 9's Carols by Candlelight one year. And um, we've had to, now you might see there, that all looks very nice on stage, right? But we we all had to move around outside of our vocal parts to make it look good on TV. And that is the first time it ever happen, happened. It totally freaked us out because usually when you're learning a part and you're singing in a vocal group, it's really helpful to stand next to the person that's singing the same part as you, not someone who's got a completely different harmony to you. And so we actually had to learn to know our harmonies standing next to even an alto sometimes so if I'm a soprano and someone's I'm singing the highest part and someone's an alto that's actually the hardest way to sing but we have to learn how to do it because it looked better on tv so you know if you had three sopranos that were all six foot tall and they were all standing on one side of the stage it looked funny so they just would move us around and not care about our vocal parts so how did we get through that well we had to sing on stage separate from each other and I've been able to sing harmonies because of these techniques I teach. I'm going to share one of them with you today. But before I say that, I want to encourage you. I don't want you to say this to yourself. I don't know how to sing harmonies because I've not been taught. Or I don't know how to get the starting note for a harmony. Or I can't discern whether I'm hitting the right harmony or not. Because I am here to help you with those things. The truth is there's, a, there's heaps of simple visual and oral techniques I can teach you that will help you immediately. I'm going to teach one of them to you. So are you ready for me to teach you my one absolute favourite hack that I still use to this day? Say yes. Put yes in the comments if you want me to, to teach you. Of course, I'm going to teach you because you're here, all right? <laughs> um, all right, here we go. You ready? Dun, 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 dun. Learn the melody first. Okay, everyone's probably going, what? That's a bit of a letdown. <laughs> But it's not. Let me tell you, okay, I have worked 
with some of the top singers in the world who will sing in vocal groups. And it's happened even in the Melbourne Gospel Choir, right? We'll go, okay, we're not getting that harmony right. Let's go back to the melody. And do you know how many times people have said, I can't remember how the melody goes? I'm going to let that sink in for a minute because that's actually why they're not remembering the harmony. It's because they don't know the melody first. So that's my first hack, right, is know that melody like that's the only thing you're going to sing, right? That's your foundation. And I am talking a lot. I mean a lot of people just don't learn that. They just get stuck in their little group or their little part and that's all that they learn. But then here's another little tip for you and it's super simple. Once you learn the rise and the fall of the melody, try singing that rise and fall but start three notes higher. So that sounds super simple, right? But all you do is just say it's um, the melody is da, da, da. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking stairs. La, 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 I'm going down. Three, two, one. Now, what would happen is if you just started three notes higher but did exactly the same thing. So da, 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 da is the third note higher. And then you did exactly the same thing. Da, da, da. I am just exactly copying the rise and the fall of the melody. And by doing that, I've found my harmony. Now, it's not always the case, but I would say nine times out of 10, that is actually the harmony. Hey, Catherine, thanks for joining us. Yes, you can play it later on Chrome. So hang with us if you can, but, and you'll also get a replay. But if you want to learn, uh, if you can't get everything on your phone right now, there will be a replay. So learning the rise and the fall of the melody and then singing that rise and fall, just starting on a different note, is the simplest way to learn parts. And you can even go as deep as thinking about how it feels in your throat. So, for example, if you're jumping notes, da, da, as in amazing grace, da, da, I can feel how that feels in, a, in my throat. And I want you to remember those feelings when you're learning your part. So you sing that melody, you think about how all of that feels, and then you just copy that three notes higher. It is so simple and it's it, people just go, no, that can't work. But I promise you, try it out and you will, you will love me for it, I'm telling you. So I just want to ask you, are you enjoying this webinar so far? I can see lots of people saying hello. Oh, Heather's here. Hey, Heather, how are you? All the way from San Diego. It's great to have you here. I'm so glad you're enjoying it because I want to share with you, I've been holding this in for like four weeks because I have I started to think really long and hard about how I could really equip people with the courses because they're quite expensive and I know lots of people can't afford them. And I started to create a new course on specifically how to sing harmonies. So I'm going to give you some a little special deal just for the people that are here um hello from louisiana hi and yes you can so you are already signed up for the replay karen catherine so now that you are in you will receive an email with the information so we have covered so far secret one the pillars of singing get these right and your voice will thrive breathing posture and resonance secret number two is my quick tips on how to increase vocal range and flexibility without an expensive vocal lesson. And then secret number three, oh, secret number three, where have you gone? Come back. I pressed the buttons and got too excited. Secret number three was how to sing harmonies. And it's coming. There we go. Um, with this one simple hack. So who wants to take things to the next level? If you're not already doing that and you really want to put in the question and answer box, I'm ready. I'm going to be doing lots of these things in the future to help you for those of you who can't afford my classes. But I want to share with you some of the things that I've put together. I have actually created a Singing Secrets Bundle which is my ultimate package of software and downloadable tools that are all available in an online course. And that includes a very brand new course that I have just created that only got released today. So this is what my secret singing bundle is all about, or singing secrets, helping you sing with ease, increase volume and clarity without having to push or wear out after singing a couple of songs, learning to sing higher with more flexibility, learning simple techniques for correct posture, all these things I've been teaching you 
there's a whole bunch more that you can learn in my courses without pushing your voice. You can learn to sing louder and stronger. Learning to sing harmonies with oral, visual and vocal techniques that can you can implement immediately. So here is what you get with the singing bundle. You get how to sing number one. Vocal Warm-Ups and Voice Physiology. It's a comprehensive online course. Understand voice physiology. Learn the benefits of correct posture and breathing and resonance. Understanding breathing anatomy. I've got heaps of pictures of your vocal folds and your, and your head and the mask of the face. And we're also going to learn um, vocal warm-ups with easy exercises you can do at home. My favourite part of this course is actually a fully produced 30-minute vocal warm-up CD that you can use every day. Just download it to your phone. There's a full ebook with diagrams and explanations and everything for you to print out. Now, if I miss your questions here, I am going to answer them, answer them, all right? We're going to get to a question and answer at the end. But that's how to sing number one. And guess what? In two years, over 890 positive reviews. Some of you have written reviews for me and I can't even tell you how grateful I am that you have just totally loved this course. My favourite review down there is down the bottom from Judd Field, who is now looking after the Melbourne Gospel Choir for me. He says, as a backing vocalist for the Madden Brothers, he went on tour with the Madden Brothers, I'm always looking to keep my voice in tip-top shape and I've used Roma's teachings and exercises for years as it's brilliant. Thanks, Judd, you're awesome. <laughs> okay, so who this works for? Singers who are just starting out. Oh, Julie, I'm so glad that you got that course. I'm so delighted. So who this works for? Singers who are just starting out. Singers who have never had training around posture and breathing. Professional singers looking for a good foundation to look after what they already have and improve it. Vocal teachers looking for more resources to teach their own students. I actually have a lot of vocal teachers doing my courses so that they can teach their students. Now, here's the number one reason why a lot of people don't get started on this. You might be thinking you can't because you don't have the experience, the confidence, the money, but you know what? You can. You definitely can. So this course, I'm not going to charge you this, is normally $197, but I'm, I'm telling you this, this deal, I'm actually not really great at <laughs> selling stuff, right? But I'm telling you, this is such a flipping good deal. Um, you've taken some of my classes on Udemy. Thank you. It is a new bundle. Some of the training that's on Udemy is in these courses, but on my own site, you have my personal uh, involvement, feedback. You get to do private webinars with me like this one. And um, I don't offer as much on those Udemy classes. They're like the basics, the bones of these courses. So how to sing, number one, vocal warm-ups and voice physiology is no, generally valued at $197. But I'm also going to add my How to Sing 2 course, which I love on increasing vocal range and flexibility. It's got vocal exercises downloaded. You can download scales for you to use that are just for increasing your vocal range. Placement imagery tools, that's very powerful. Understanding your voice registers and classifications. Big question I get all the time is, what is my vocal range? What is a voice register? Am I a soprano? Well, this course teaches you how to find it for yourself. And I've also got a singing dictionary ebook of common singing terms in that course. And I'll put that in because when I was starting out as a singer, there were lots of people using all these words that I didn't understand and I was too embarrassed to ask what they were. So I created a book all around it so that you don't have to ask anyone. You can know what mezzo-soprano means and know what, um, you know, piano means and all that kind of stuff. So it was fun putting that together. So with these tools, you'll be able to increase vocal range, perform your vocal warm-ups to extend your range, sing higher, louder and stronger without vocal fatigue, understand the most common singing terms and become a well-educated vocalist and ask questions. So what I do with this course, and Kirsten, you were talking about my Udemy courses, this is something I do on my private site with these courses. If you have a question, I will generally answer it with a video so that I can keep adding to the course. So, for example, some people might say to me, I don't understand what vocal fry is or what is falsetto? So I just created a video on it so that you can understand what it is and then give you some ideas on what kind of exercises you can do to create falsetto for, for those of you who are males who want to learn falsetto, et cetera, et cetera. So that's super fun with that course. So you don't have to get regular weekly lessons to get good vocal training. You can practice in your own time. You have these courses forever and it's constantly updating. 
updated. Now, I've had people say to me, I'm not a professional singer. I don't know if I need all of this. Oh, yes, I do have more training, Selena. It's coming up. So I'll share that in a minute. And plus another special deal that you will get that's only available in this webinar. Um, you might also be saying, you know, I'm not a professional singing. The training's overwhelming. And I just want to encourage you that it's not true and that'll hold you back from success. You know, I've, I've had people who are professional singers come to me in my studio, but I've got lots of people who are mums, young mums who are just starting out. They've finally got time for themselves. So, so don't let that hold you back. And I'll tell you why these courses are great, like learning online is so valuable, is because each lecture is around three to seven minutes. It's in bite-sized pieces on purpose so that you can take in the training and stop and start at your own leisure. So you can go, okay, that was a bit to take in. I'm going to stop and have a cup of tea now, or I'm just going to work on this video for a bit. I love that you can do that with online training. It's also self-led training. You can do it as fast or as slow as you want, depending on your learning style, how busy you are, or how much you're understanding the training. And also, if you're not understanding anything, you can shoot me a message in our discussion boards and I will answer them. I'm on every single day helping our students. So how to sing to, increase vocal range, download scales for you to use, placement imagery tools, understanding voice registers, finding your own vocal range and the singing dictionary ebook. The total value of that is around $197. So that's two courses right there. You're not going to pay this, by the way. That's two courses for $197. But this is the reason I'm doing this um, lecture today. One is for people that can't afford my courses, I wanted to give you something that you could use straight away. But also I'm launching a very new course. It's my Christmas present to me. How to sing harmonies. Because this was the biggest question that I get in my courses all the time is how do I learn harmony? So I decided to create a simple course that you can use with lots of different things that you can practice with. I've had years of performances, as you know, singing in choirs and groups, both on stage and in the studio, to get my head around how to sing harmonies. But you don't have to do that because I'm going to give you these secrets. All right, so this is what is included in the Singing Harmonies course. I've got my top 11 basic tips for singing harmonies like a pro. You can also learn how to create your own harmonies from scratch using visual techniques. Learn harmonies using oral and interval training. Learn how to break down song recordings. This is really valuable. Learn how to break down song recordings to help you hear and even create your own harmonies. Blend in a vocal group or duo. And I've also got downloadable PDFs. There's video training. You've got some MP3s. I've actually included a bunch of Melbourne Gospel Choir backing tracks in this course that you can sing along to so that you can, um, you know, have a, have a fiddle with harmonies. There's lyric sheets. Um, there's a whole step-by-step -step process from start to finish, and that's valued at $97. So in total, you receive how to sing one, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through that again. <laughs> how to sing two which is all about extending your vocal range. And then how to sing three, which is all about singing harmonies, my top 11 basic tips, visual and oral techniques. These are techniques that I learned when I was doing my classical singing exams also. So it's personal experience, but it's also the stuff you get, um, e uh, you get examined on when you're learning to, to sing um, in your exams. So um, that's a total full price of four, 91. I've also got something extra I'm going to offer you that's just for you. No one else is going to get it. Now, obviously, I'm not going to charge you $4.91, all right? <laughs> but if I did, you know, I actually think it's worth it. I really do. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on lessons. You know, if you just did one lesson a week for a year, that's three and a half thousand dollars. Would you believe? I once looked back at my <laughs> accounts and I was like, oh my goodness, that's very expensive. So is it worth it if it's just learning correct breathing, posture, vocal techniques, a daily warm-up routine? If you're getting a comprehensive two ebooks, lifetime registration, I think it is worth it. So if all I did was help set you up with a year's worth of your very own singing lessons with me helping you in the discussion board, that's normally $3,200. Would it be worth $491? Well, I think it is. If I just gave you all these tools, would it be worth $491? I think it is. If all I did was connect you with a whole tribe of singers, this is my favourite bit. 
I love our house sing singing group. People are starting to post themselves performing on there. I love it. I love the community that we're building. So I'm going to give you a special discount today because you're here with me and I'm actually going to offer you a deep discount to get you started if you haven't got those other two courses. If you only want the How to Sing one, I will send a private email of the Harmony one. I will send you an email with a, a coupon because you're already one of my students for that one so that you don't have to pay 97 for that. But today for all three courses, I'm not going to give you $3,000 bill and I'm not going to get you to pay $4.91. And I'm not even going to get you to pay half price. I've had a big, long, hard think about this, how I can help you. So I'm going to do it for $97 for those whole three courses, just for a short time, because I don't make a lot of money on that. But I just really want to add more people to our tribe and, and see you really succeeding. So instead of $4.97, it's $97 for the whole kit and caboodle <laughs> if my singing secret this is my guarantee to you too because I do genuinely care about your training this isn't just about me making money right obviously I have to make a living but I, I actually really want to bless you but if my singing secret bundle doesn't help you with exactly how to sing with ease increase volume and clarity without having to push or wear out after singing a couple of songs if you want to sing higher with more flexibility and learn simple techniques for correct posture, breathing and resonance without pushing your voice, then I will refund your money. So if you're not happy after, say, a month of doing it, I'm really happy to refund your money. So the real question is, is it worth gambling a few minutes of your time? Go and check it out. I would love you to check it out. But I've got, now you can check it out on my site. There's a link at the beginning of this discussion, but also if you go down to the bottom of this page, it says offers on the right-hand side. There's questions, polls and offers. There is a link to buy that special for that price. But I'm also adding a final bonus that's not in that, um, If because anyone can go there right now and buy it, but because you're here with me, I'm going to add a final bonus for you. So when you become one of my students, you get a personal five-minute review of your voice by me personally. So I will personally listen to something that you send in and I will give you a recommendation of what you need to work on. So I've had years of vocal lessons, like I've told you, to become a qualified vocal coach. So I'd love to give you a brief vocal critique to help pinpoint what areas you need to work on most in your training. And how's this going to help you? Well, it'll help you because I'll be able to say, okay, it looks like you need to work on dot, dot, dot. Go to this module first and work on you know, increasing vocal range or work on getting your pitch right. Um, so you'll be able to get a, a bit more incentive to know where, or a bit more of a goal of where you need to go with what you're doing. Now, you might be saying, no, I've had people go, I can't do that. I don't want to show you my songs or do I have to post it on a public forum? No, you don't. You can email it to me using the email in the course you can just do it using um, an iPhone. I don't. I prefer video and singing because it does help me to see how you're using your body as you sing. But even if you're too nervous to do that, just sending me a recording from your iPhone. Just press record in um, what I don't know what it's called. I can't remember what it's called. Any phone, you know, just press record. Sing to me. Send it to me. So don't be discouraged if you don't have the confidence to perform in public. Here's why it's not true that you can't do this why it's holding you back from success all you need to do like I said is either film yourself on your phone use a music app like acapella or smule or record your voice using your iPhone and then just email it in that's all you've got to do and I won't post it anywhere <laughs> I'll be able to determine the best course of action simply by watching and listening to you sing for a few minutes so consider it an audition without having to be in the room which is lots of fun so normally I would charge $47 for that and I'm going to give that to you for free today if you if you sign up today. So it's a limited offer. Obviously I can't do that. You know, I've got 16,000 students so I can't do it for 16,000 people. But So it's only available to the people that are doing this webinar. Now we've had over 200 people sign up for this webinar so I'm like I'm getting, if 200 people buy them I will still do it. Um, it might take me a while to get through it all, but it's a joy. I absolutely love this part of uh, being a vocal coach. So that value is $47. So altogether, how to sing one is $197. How to sing two, $197. 
How to Sing 3, How to Sing Harmony is my new course, $97 value. Downloadable scales, vocal warm-ups for you to use in your vocal range, downloadable PDFs, eBooks, video trainings, MP3s, and a personal five-minute review. That is a total of $538, but I'm going to do it for $97 today um, during this webinar. So how do you get this deal? You can head to the link that's under offers or at the beginning of this discussion, or you can go to training.romawaterman.com and um, you will see the deal there up for a short time. Now, I've, I'm saying thank you here, but if anyone has any questions, I would love to hear them. If you've got anything you want to ask me, ask away before we finish up. I am very mindful of your time and we've gone um, up to an hour here. But if you have any questions, uh, if a melody is major, minor, Dorica, Jonica, I want to know if a melody is major. I'm not sure what you mean, Joel. Can you explain a bit more to me? I'm not sure what that, I'm not sure what you're saying, but um, yeah, just I'll wait for you to sign in. For those of you that have my other two courses, I will send you an email about the new course with a discount as well for you because you're already one of my students. Um, I'm just wondering, is there, okay, Mel, is there material to help me find my mix? I have a huge gap between my chest voice and head voice and it's not really smooth. Mel, do you have my How to Sing 2 course? Because we talk about that in the course. So um, there is the exercises that are actually included in that course are to help you with your gap um, and to help you with vocal blending your registers is actually the term that we use. So it teaches you how to do that and we talk about how to use a mixture of chest and head voice to do that. Um, so that is a very difficult thing to achieve. I totally get what you're saying, but it's not impossible. Oh, there's so many people asking questions. Here we go. Um, yeah, so so yes, there is material in my How to Sing One course for that, and that will help. Those those um, scars will help blend your registers. Hi again, I said I've just started Pilates to work on my core and posture. Is that helpful? Absolutely, yes. Oh my goodness, do you know when I noticed that? I mean, my teacher used to say to me all the time, um, you know, oh, I can't. I can't actually, she'd say, work on your core, work on your core. And I didn't think it was a big deal, right, till I had a C-section when I had my first child. And it took me six months to be able to breathe correctly because my core was gone. So that will help you enormously. Um, yeah, <laughs> Pilates is on my list too. But he, I can't do all the big high cardio stuff. Uh, okay, what else is here? Sorry, there's so many questions coming through. I'm, I'm losing it. Um, yes, Kirsten, the bundle isn't showing that five minute critic because I'm only doing it for you in the webinar. I will know that you get it because your email address is in this webinar and I have a private email list, a separate email list just for people that signed up for the webinar. So that's how I'll know. And, you know, in some of my courses I do offer, hey, you can sync post on the board, but I don't do, this will be advanced. I will give you as much information as I can, but I will know because you've signed up for this webinar. Um, any ideas or resources for working with boys who are, sorry, it's gone again. Uh, change it. Oh, again, I know you don't have to sign up to LinkedIn to get it. I know that says that on there when you go up to my site. That's for people that do have LinkedIn. If they want to sign in using their LinkedIn in account, they can, but you don't have to do that. You can just sign in with your email address. Any ideas or resources for working with boys whose voices are changing? What a great question, Ben. Look, I haven't personally, I have had students that have had their voice break um, when I've been training them. In fact, I've even had um, students go away over school holidays and come back with a completely different voice. I would say um, in that kind of, you know, those three pillars we talked about at the beginning, just learning that is very helpful. There's not a lot you can do with the creaking and the croaking that's going to happen in that transition because that's just part of hormones and change. But if people, uh, if you're being taught correctly three pillars, posture, breathing and resonance, your foundation will set you up. What a lot of singers do tend to do is push that um, that voice change as it's happening. They push, um, uh, the, um, in particular, a male voice into learning more advanced stuff when their voice isn't quite ready. And so I would say that that breathing, posture and resonance is the key as they're going through it and then being patient with those changes. So it could take three to six months before 
the voice is completely um, sounding like a male voice. And here's another interesting tip for you. You know, a female voice, your voice actually breaks also if you're a female voice, but it doesn't happen until you're in your late 20s and it's not as noticeable as it is with a male voice. So for those of you who are maybe in your 30s and up, you might have noticed, for example, that your voice sounds a little bit lower or you sing a little bit lower than you used to. There's actually been a voice break that happens in your late 20s that is not as obvious as when a male voice breaks. And that's why a lot of opera singers, this is very interesting, but a lot of female opera singers don't really make their mark in the opera scene until they're in their late 20s, early 30s, because of this voice change. So it does happen to females as well, but being gentle and just working on your, those foundations is really, really important. Oh, major, minor. Okay, Jorg, I'm coming back to your question. How do I know if song is major or minor? You know, if I'm understanding your, correct, your question correctly, this is going to be a really simple way to do it. But when I was learning piano growing up, I could always tell what song was in a major key and a minor key simply by this one thing that my piano teacher said to me. And he said, if it sounds happy, if your song sounds happy, if the melody is sounding happy, that's a major key. If it sounds sad, it's probably a minor key. So I don't know if that's helpful or if I've just given you a really basic answer there, but honestly, that's kept me through my whole life. I've understood that. And my daughter, who is 12, she'll, I taught her that and now she, she can pick major and minor keys just simply by remembering that. Yeah, it's very simple, isn't it? Well, okay, guys, we've had an hour. I know some of you are doing this in your lunch break. Again, I'm sorry it's the middle of the day. It's because we had some people from overseas signing up and so I didn't want them to miss it. But if you missed anything, you can sign uh, you you're in the in here now. You are going to get the replay that will be up for a short time. Um, that sale will be up for a short time and you those of you who want that 5 minute vocal critique, I will know that you are part of this masterclass. So you will get it. And it is just so lovely to meet you and have a bit more of a chat. We will do another webinar at another time where you see my face, hey? Because, you know, my face is awesome. <laughs> uh, but it's been wonderful to have you. Don't forget to check out that link. Check everything out. If I did not get your question or if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer them. So just shoot me an email at roma at romawaterman. Com. Thank you so much for interacting in the course today. It has been awesome to have you. And I look forward to seeing you again at another webinar sometime soon. All right.